Hi friends, hello and welcome to my channel, The Composite Canvas. I am a test professional working with an MNC with 8 plus years of experience in software testing. In this video, we will be seeing the exam structure and rules which one must know for appearing for the ISTQB Advanced Level Test Analyst. So come on, let's get started. Let's begin with the exam rules. So rule one talks about the exam questions which will be based on your syllabus with respect to the version. So the questions which will be appearing in your exam will be only from the syllabus. Rule two talks about multiple choice questions, which means you will be given questions and you will be given multiple choice for every question from which you need to select the most appropriate answer. So now let's say that there is a question below the question it's mentioned that you need to choose one correct answer or two correct answers. So that would be specified below the question itself. So you need to read the question very carefully in that case because let's say if you have a question and it says that you need to choose two correct answers and if you only select one answer even if that is correct it would be considered as wrong and you would not get any marks for that question because it said that you need to choose two correct answers. So you need to be very careful here. And the rule three talks about the points available for a question should reflect the difficulty of the question. So K2 questions would have one point, K3 questions would have one, two or three points and K4 questions would have two or three points. So the level of the question would be mentioned in your exam paper. Now the time taken for answering for reading the question and answering for the K2 level questions would be two minutes. The time taken to read the question and answer for K3 level would be three minutes. The time taken to read and answer K4 level questions would be four minutes. Talking about rule four, the advanced level test analyst exam would be comprising of 40 questions which would be for the duration of 120 minutes that is it will last for two hours. Rule 5 talks about the score. You need at least 60, 65% of the total points to pass the exam. So that means the total points for your exam would be 80 points and you need to achieve 52 points at least to pass. And uh, the point to be noted here is that there is no negative marking over here. Now let's get into the exam structure for advanced level test analyst exam. So LO over here stands for learning objective. K level is the difficulty level of the questions. This column talks about the number of questions per LO and then we have the number of questions per chapter. So this table is helpful in case for the preparation of your exam. So from chapter one, it says that there are there will be six mandatory questions in your exam. Here they have given objective wise. So these are the sections from your syllabus and they have explained us exactly how many questions would be coming from these sections. So this becomes easier for your preparation. So here you see that what type of questions would come from the chapter one section wise if you see this is just to give you a rough idea of how the question will look like 1.2 talks about the testing in the software development life cycle so for the from this section the question would be like explain why and how the timing and level of involvement for the test analyst varies when working with different software development lifecycle models and the answer would be hidden in this section itself so there will be options given to you from this section itself. Test analysis. The question for this would be summarize the appropriate tasks for the test analyst when conducting analysis activities. So the activities which are given you mentioned here would be there in the test analysis section. Now test design. The uh, questions would be K2 and K4 level. K questions would be like explain why test conditions should be understood by the stakeholders. K4 question would be like for a given project scenario, select the appropriate design level for test cases, high level or low level. So in this question, you will be given a scenario which would be a real based scenario and then you need to mention 
that what kind of test cases would be more appropriate in that scenario. So the next is the K2. Explain the issues to be considered in test, de test case design. So from the 1.5 section, that is the test implementation section of chapter 1, the question would be like summarize the appropriate tasks for the test analyst when conducting test implementation activities. And then from 1.6, that is the test execution, it would be tasks for the test analyst when conducting test execution activities. So here you need to focus more on the tasks for every level. From chapter 2, there will be one mandatory question in your exam. So the question would be like, there will be a situation given to you and you need to have a better understanding of risk identification, risk assessment and risk mitigation so that you can select appropriate answer in such situations. Chapter 3, test techniques is the most important chapter which has 17 mandatory questions coming from it in the exam. So these are the object uh, learning objectives which are k4 and k2 k3 levels so you need to focus more on this chapter so you need to have a clear understanding of the testing techniques from chapter 3 because the questions would be like you will be given a specification item and then you will be told to identify the number of test cases you know with respect to the particular testing technique for example equivalence partitioning boundary value decision table state so in case of state you will see the diagram in the question which is given to you and then you will be told that how many test cases uh, are there or how many test cases will have a hundred percent coverage area so that why likewise you need to answer the questions for the 3.3 .3 experience based test techniques the questions would be explain the principles of experience based test techniques and the benefits and drawbacks compared to black box and defect based testing techniques identify the exploratory tests from a given scenario or it would be describe the application of defect based test techniques and differentiate their use from black box test techniques also the question for k4 level it would be project situation would be given to you where you need to determine which black box or experience based test techniques would be applied to achieve the specific goal. Chapter 4 is another important chapter which has 11 mandatory questions coming in the exam which talks about the testing software quality characteristics. So they have given here like as per the section how many exactly how many questions would be coming from the section. So these are the type of questions which you will see from chapter number 4. So you should have a clear understanding of the functional and non-functional quality characteristics, which is the functional co completeness, functional correctness, functional appropriateness. And for the non-functional characteristics, that is the interoperability testing, portability testing. So all the questions would be with respect to this only. Coming to chapter number five, there will be three mandatory questions from the chapter reviews. And the questions would be like, you will be given requirements and then you will be told to identify problems from the given requirement specifications. So there will be a checklist given to you and then you need to compare whether the checklist is present in the requirements specification which is given to you. Also, it could be that there will be a user story which is given to you and you need to find problems in that user story. And the last chapter, chapter 6, test tools and automation there will be two mandatory questions coming from this chapter. So if you see chapter 1 to chapter 6, there will be 40 mandatory questions which will be coming from respective sections. So these are the questions which will be appearing in your exam from chapter number 6. So the first would be of type scenario and uh, you will be told to determine appropriate activities of a test analyst in a keyword driven testing project. And the second type of question would be, you need to know the usage of the testing tools which can be applied in the test design or test data preparation and test execution phases. So you need to have a better understanding of the testing tools from chapter number six. So with this, we are done with the exam structure and exam rules. Hope you find this helpful.